go ahead and get out your unit title page or turn to it in your journal. And we are going to do lesson 1.2, adding and subtracting polynomials. Let's go ahead and take a couple of seconds to write that down. And before we get started on the notes, I want to show you this funny YouTube video. Um, it's a good example of why you should learn how to combine like terms. Hi, welcome to Burger Nation. How may I help you today? Um, let me get two hamburgers with just pickles, two cheeseburgers with another cheeseburger, everything on them, four more hamburgers with everything, a cheeseburger with no pickles, and cheeseburger with nothing but pickles, two more hamburgers with everything but onions on one, everything but pickles, mustard, and tomatoes on the other, three large fries, six medium fries, one large fry, a junior fry, and two junior fries, three more cheeseburgers with extra cheese and bacon, two more junior fries, a hamburger with everything, two more hamburgers with everything, and two more hamburgers with everything, four large cokes and large sprite, two large cokes and a small sprite, five large cokes and one large coke and a small coke, three small cokes and a small coke and a small coke. Okay, will that be everything? Yes. Gotcha. That's two hamburgers with just pickles, two cheeseburgers with another cheeseburger, everything on it, four more hamburgers with everything, a cheeseburger with no pickles, and a cheeseburger with nothing but pickles, two more hamburgers with everything but onions on one, and everything but pickles, mustard, and tomatoes on the other, three large fries, six medium fries, one large fry, a junior fry, and two junior fries, three more cheeseburgers with extra cheese and bacon, two more junior fries, a hamburger with everything, two more hamburgers with everything, and two more hamburgers with everything, four large cokes and a large fry, two large cokes and a small fry, five large cokes and a small coke, three small cokes and a small coke and a small coke. Is that correct? Not quite. Uh, I wanted two hamburgers with just pickles. Two. All right. So that video is kind of funny. It actually keeps going on for a long time, but it just shows why you should combine like terms. So if you go to a restaurant and you're ordering food, you shouldn't be like, "I need five cheeseburgers, two sprites, five more cheeseburgers, another coke, um, maybe another cheeseburger." You want to combine all of like your cheeseburgers together, all of your cokes together, all of your fries together. And it's the same thing with um, combining like terms whenever we're adding and subtracting polynomials. We want to combine our like terms. So our like terms would be like combine all of your x squareds, all of your x's, and all of your ones together. So let's look at some of these example with algebra tiles. If you haven't gotten them out, go ahead and do that. Okay, let's start with this first problem. So you can go ahead and get algebra tiles out to model this. We have 5x plus 2 minus 3x plus 1. So you should have 5x's and then two ones, three negative x's, and then a positive one. So we are going to be combining like terms. And let me go ahead and write x, negative x on these just so you can remember that those are x's as well. All right, so we wanna simplify this up a little bit, okay? Um, just like I said, we wouldn't go into the restaurant and be like, I need five cheeseburgers, um, two fries, oh, and then take away three of those cheeseburgers and then give me another fry. Okay, it'd be a lot easier if we could combine it together into just a simple order. So what happens here whenever we have these x's, I've got five positives and three negatives. So we can cancel off what's called a zero pair. Because if I have a positive plus a negative, that when I add them up together, that equals zero. So I'm getting rid of those zero pairs to simplify it. So one plus negative one is zero. And I've got another zero pair and another zero pair, okay? So that would leave me with how many x's? And that should be two. So we would write this as, whoops, let me draw that a little better. Here we go. So this would equal two x's is what we would have left. And if it's easier to see, let me scribble those out so you can see that better. And then I have three ones. So if I write this as a simplified polynomial, I have two x's and three ones. Okay, you can also check it algebraically. 5x minus 3x is 2x, and then 2 plus 1 is 3. All right, let's do the next one. So this time we have some x squareds. 
So go ahead and get out your um, algebra tiles to model this. 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 plus negative 3x squared plus x plus 4. Since this is a lot um, longer problem, I'm going to write mine a little bit smaller this time. Okay, so you should be getting out 2x squared, 3 positive x's, and then 5 negative 1's. Then we're going to move on and add on 3 negative x squared. So I need three more x squared, but they're going to be negative. A positive x. And then four positive ones. Okay, so let's see what all of this equals whenever I combine my like terms and cancel off my zero pairs. I'm going to use black this time just so you can see me canceling it off it better. So let's start with the x squared. I have 1x squared plus a negative x squared. So that's a zero pair. Then I have another zero pair. So I'm left with 1 negative x squared. And then let's add up all of the x's. So I don't have any negative x's, so I'm just going to add these up. I've got 3 plus 1 more. So I would have, whoops, not negative, positive. I would have 4 positive x's. And then now let's find some zero pairs with these 1 units. So I've got four positives and four negatives. So I should be able to cancel off one, two, three, four, zero pairs, leaving me with one or one negative unit. So I would just have this negative one here. All right, so let's go ahead and write this as a simplified polynomial. So this would be negative x squared plus 4x minus 1. Alright, let's do the next example. This time we have 3x plus 2 times 2x minus 1. So we need to double what's in the parentheses. So let's start off with 3x's. If you just want to draw it this time, you don't have to get out your algebra tiles. That way we can save a little time. Let's go ahead and draw 3x's. And then let's draw what's in the parentheses. So we've got 2x and a negative 1. But we need to double it because of this 2 out here. Okay, remember we would distribute this out and we would double what's in the parentheses. So I need another 2x's and another negative 1. All right, so now let's just combine like terms. So I would end up with 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 x's and 2 negative 1's. Okay, last example of algebra tiles. Obviously, you do not want to do algebra tiles every single time because it's pretty time consuming. But this just gives you a really good visual of what this looks like um, whenever you're adding and subtracting them together. So let's start off with this one, 2x squared. So we need 2x squared, 3x's, two positive ones, but this time, we're subtracting x squared minus 3. 
So basically when you subtract something, you're making it the opposite sign. Let me do that in red just so we'll know that it's like opposite, okay? So whenever we multiply something by negative one, you're making the sign opposite. So we're gonna be changing to the opposite sign because we're multiplying by negative one. So whenever I distribute out this negative, negative one times x squared would be negative x squared. So now I have a negative x squared. And then negative one times negative three would actually give me a positive three. So instead of having three negative ones, I now have three positive ones. All right, so now let's cancel off our zero pairs. X squared minus X squared. And I think that's it. So we would just be left with, I'm not gonna redraw it. Let's just go ahead and write it as a simplified polynomial. 1x squared plus 3x plus 5. Okay, so now let's do some examples where we don't have to do algebra tiles. Let's start up here at the top and go over some steps when simplifying polynomials algebraically. The first thing we need to do is clear grouping symbols using the distributive property. So I have a picture of this money because it's like if you're distributing out money to people, okay? You have to give it out to each person. The second step is to combine like terms. And then the third step is place terms in order from highest to lowest degree and alphabetical. So that's why we started off with our lesson um, that you just finished, because you have to know what degree is in order to put it in correct order. So let's start off with this first one. I need to distribute out this negative three because I'm multiplying everything in the parentheses by it. Negative three times three x would be negative nine x. Negative three times five is negative 15. And then we're adding on two times nine x. So I need to distribute out this two. Two times nine x would be 18 x. And two times negative six is negative 12. Now we need to combine our like terms. So I have nine negative x's and 18 positive x's. So if I were doing this with algebra tiles, I would just cancel off my zero pairs. And so same thing here, if I add these together, Negative 9 plus 18x will leave you with 9x. And then I have negative 15 minus 12. Negative 15 minus 12 would be negative 27. Okay, also do you see how I've circled my x's and then underlined my 1's? This is a good method to help you stay organized. You can also use colors. I don't know if Miss Woolley taught you all that but you could use different colors for each term. You could do different shapes. It's just a good tool to do to use in order to stay organized whenever you're simplifying polynomials. Okay, so let's move to the next example. I'm going to distribute out this five to the a and minus b. Five times a would be five a, and then five times negative b is negative five b. Now I'm going to distribute out the negative six. Make sure you pay attention to the sign, okay? It's a negative six, so you're multiplying everything by negative six. Negative six times a is negative six a, and negative six times b is negative six b. Now we need to go in alphabetical order, so let's start with the a's. Five a minus six a. So five minus six is negative one, so this would leave us with negative one a and then negative 5b minus 6b. Negative 5 minus 6 is negative 11. So we would have negative 11b. All right, 
look for this problem. We've got some fractions happening. I know all of you love fractions so much, right? Just kidding. Okay, so same thing. Don't get all worried because it's a fraction. It's okay, you can do it. We need to start, start by distributing out this negative one half. So you're gonna take half of each number. Negative one half times four x would be negative two x. And then negative one half times two would be negative one. Now let's move to the next fraction and we're going to distribute out five thirds or multiply five thirds by each term in the parentheses. So five thirds of nine. Okay, let's have a quick review on how you multiply fractions. Five thirds times nine, we could write nine as nine over one. And then just multiply straight across. So five times nine is 45 and then three times one is three. So this would be 45 divided by three, which is 15. So 5 thirds of 9 x squared would give you 15 x squared. If that scares you to do that in your head, it's okay. Try it and then you can always check yourself with the calculator. Okay, I'm not opposed to that. Just try to do it without it first and then you can always check yourself. Okay, so moving on to the next one. 5 thirds times negative 6x. So we need to multiply 5 thirds times negative 6 over 1. 5 times negative 6 is negative 30. And then 3 times 1 is 3. So negative 30 divided by 3 would be negative 10. So I'd have negative 10x. And then finally, 5 thirds times 3. This would be 15 over 3. If we multiply straight across, 15 divided by 3 is 5. So I would just get plus 5. All right, so now we're done with the first step, and now we just need to combine our like terms. So it looks like we only have 1x squared, or 15x squared, but there's not another x squared term. So let's go ahead and write that first, since we have to go from highest to lowest degree. So I'm going to start off with 15x squared. And then I need to go to my X's. So I'm gonna use a different color this time. I'm gonna circle all of my X's in green. Negative two X minus 10 X. Negative two minus 10 would be negative 12 X. And then finally, just my numbers. Negative one plus five would be positive four. And that's your final answer. Okay, last example for today, and that is an application problem. So we have this rectangle. Go ahead and draw a rectangle. And it has a length of 4m squared plus 6mn. So since this is a rectangle, I know that if this length is 4m squared plus 6mn, the opposite side also has to be 4m squared plus 6mn. And then we know the width is 6mn minus 3m squared. So we can go ahead and write that on each side of the width. Now we want to find the expression for the perimeter. Remember that perimeter is just adding up all the sides. So you're just adding up all the way around. So let's go ahead and start with the m squared. I have 4m squared minus 3m squared plus 4m squared minus 3m squared. So 4 minus 3 plus 4 minus 3 would be 2m squared. And then now let's add our mn's together. So mn is a complete term. So the other like terms would also be the mn's. 6mn, more 6mn, and then another 6mn. 6mn. That's a tongue twister. Alright, so we've got 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 mn's, which would give us 24mn. And that would be your answer. Alright, you're going to go ahead and log on to Google Classroom. And just like the previous assignment, assignment, you're going to log in, um, go to Google Slides, and then type in your answers into the text box. If you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day.